Something exciting is happening. Many Jews today feel the need for revitalized Judaism. People are searching for a more vital and authentic mode of Jewish expression. And more than ever, we need to shift not only physically, but spiritually out of exile mode. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are speaking with the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Chaim. Shalom, Rabbi Bar Chaim. Shalom. How many times should Kaddish be said every day? We have uh, a couple of ancient sources regarding this uh, issue, and I will read one of those sources now. This is a Teshuvah, uh, written by Rabbeinu Kloni Moshe Zakel, who was uh, one generation uh, before Rashi. He was already a mature adult when uh, Rashi was born. And he was written his name as follows. He says, Seder HaTefilot, Shenahagu Ad Atta, the order of the Tefilah that we have, that we are accustomed to, to do on a daily basis. Anshe Knesset HaGadola Tiknu, this was all arranged by Anshe Knesset HaGadola. This, by the way, is a claim that one could uh, question, but the, the important fact or the important idea here is that Rabbeinu Klonimus is saying that these practices that we have, including the number of times we say Kaddish and when we say Kaddish, are ancient practices going back a long a time. The, many of the Rishonim were uh, in the habit of when, of when they wished to express the thought that something was ancient and went back a very long way into the, into the past to a point where we are no longer able to to pinpoint exactly who said this for the first time and in exactly what period that was. They often re referred to Anshay Knesset HaGadola, the men of the Great Assembly, which was of course a body about, uh, which existed about 2,400 years ago. At any rate, Rabbi Klonimo says, Wehem tiknu lanu b'chol yom shiv'a pa'amim, sheva pa'amim kaddish. And their takana was, or the ancient takana was to say kaddish seven times every day. And he goes on to enumerate these seven times, and he says this is excluding those which we say uh, on those days when we read from the Torah, because after reading from the Torah, we also say Kaddish, when we can conclude the reading from the Torah. And he goes on to say, We are, The Takana was to say Kaddish, recite Kaddish, in the Beit Knesset, when there's a Tzibur, a Minyan, Mipne Shehat Chalat HaKadish Yitgadal Yitkadash. We say in the Kadish Yitgadal Yitkadash Shem Eraba, we say we pray for a time when Hashem's name will be sanctified and recognized throughout the world. Wa'en Shemo Mitgadel Ba'olam Ela Al-Yadei Torah Shebikhtav Lefi Shehi Ikar. Hashem's name is made known, first and foremost, by reading from the Torah, from the Tanakh, by publicizing, by reciting those Pesukim. This is the, uh, the most basic form of Kiddush Hashem in the world, says Rabbeinu Klonimos. And therefore, when we read from the Mikra, from the Tanakh, and we conclude that reading, we say Kaddish. And then he goes on to explain that the first Kaddish that we say is before Baruch Hu in the morning, because we finish saying the Pesukim of Pesukim de Zimra. Uh, that's the first Kaddish that he, num that he mentions in his uh, seven Kaddishim. And then the next one he mentions is the Kaddish that we say after Tahanun, after Nefirat Apaim, which we say after the Shemun Esra, which also in involves the reciting of Pesukim. And then the third one is after Seder Hayom, in other words, Uvarat Zion Goel, where we say the Kiddusha, and then there is a, uh, a third Kaddish, that is the three Kaddishim with, uh, which belong to Tefirat Shaharit. With regards to Tefilat uh, Minha, we say Kaddish, explains Rabbi Nuklonimus, uh, after we say Tehilat Dawid Ashrei, before the Tefilah, which is also from the Tanakh, and again after the Tahanunim, at the end of Tefilat Minha, after Shmon Esra, we say Nefilat Apaim, again we recite different Pesukim and Mizmurim, and again we say Kaddish, that's another two Kaddishim, that's five uh, for the, so far for the day, and we have another two in Arvith. Also, one before the Shmon Esra and one after the Shmon Esra, also usually uh, associated with the, with the recitation of certain Pesukim, as Rabbi Klonimos explains. This number seven, he connects also to the Pasuk Sheva, Bayom Hilal Ticha, I praise you every day seven times. 
And this is the sum total of Kadishim, according to Rabbeinu Klonimos, who was known as a, uh, an expert in uh, such matters, matters r pertaining to tefillah and other ancient customs. This is the number of Kadishim that he says we are required to recite every day. Why, therefore, is Kaddish commonly said much more frequently than seven times a day? Well, the fact of the matter is that it is not only Kaddish that is being said many times a day more frequently than required. It is the fact that we have added over the centuries, over the millennia perhaps, but certainly over the last uh, several centuries, many, many additions and accretions have uh, surfaced which have become, as it were, an essential part of the tefillah, of the order of the tefillah in the Beth Knesset. And this is the essential point that we're talking about, the order of prayer in the synagogue, that which the tzibud, that which the public, the community, is there for and is required to be there for. When you add many things to that order of tefillah, you also end up adding many kaddishim, because if we are to say kaddish after reciting any portion from the Tanakh, any Mizmor Tehilim, for example, then every time you recite a Mizmor, you also have to say Kaddish, according to what Rabbeinu Klonimos uh, told us. And this opinion of Rabbeinu Klonimos, by the way, is not only his opinion, this also appears in another source, in a Teshuvah of the Ra'avi Avad, which I will also br very briefly read to you. In Teshuvah, uh, Siman Kof Pei Aleph, Teshuvot Ra'avi Avad, who was uh, one of the greatest uh, of the Chachamim in uh, Provence, the south of France, in the generations of the Rishonim. He was also the father-in-law of the Ra'avad. He writes a teshuva uh, entirely dedicated to the subject of Kaddish, and he writes as follows. V'Kaddish aher yomru ahar kriath mizmor o perek o agada o mishna sheregilim rikrot v'miksat mekomoth. Here again we hear the concept of reciting Kaddish after uh, reciting any, any Mizmor from Tehillim, for example. He also mentions, apart from Mizmor, he also mentions um, a, a Mishnah or a Perek or an Agada, in other words, things from Torah Shabbat, from Torah Shabbat Peh. But he also says clearly that any time we read any section from the Torah from, or from the Tanakh, we recite Kaddish. So based on this uh, practice or this understanding, which is not... Uh, attested to in the, uh, in the Korot of Chazal, and the sources of Chazal, and yet this, this is the common practice. Therefore, every time you add something to, to the tefillah, you also end up adding a Kaddish. And th this, this therefore leads to a, a huge inflation of the tefillah. Uh, from, from beginning to end, we end up with many additions, both before the tefillah and after the tefillah, and therefore also many Kaddishim. Is the Rav suggesting that many of these additions should not have been made part of the fixed order of prayer in the synagogue? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, that is what I'm suggesting, but it's hardly my suggestion. The Rambam writes this explicitly in a Teshuvah, which I'd like to read briefly to you. This is a well-known Teshuvah of the Rambam, Reish Samech Aleph, Simon Reish Samech Aleph. He writes, Referring to all kinds of additions that he was asked about, to the tefillah and, and, the, and the reciting of mizmorim, of uh, prakim, per, uh, chapters from tehillim, etc., before and after the tefillah, he writes as follows. Kol ze yafe me'od burasui. This is all a very fine and commendable practice. Because it helps people to have more uh, devotion and be more connected and uh, more involved in their tefillah. As we see in the Mishnah, says the Rambam, it, was, it speaks about the early uh, pious ones, the great Hasidim who used to meditate and uh, spend a certain amount of time preparing themselves for tefillah before the actual tefillah, before the actual Shmon Esre, because to achieve the proper level of kawanat of, of uh, devotion of the heart, is not a simple matter. And therefore, anything which helps anything which assists a person in, in this direction is, is desirable, says the Rambam. However, he goes on to say, Aval This is very, very good indeed and wonderful for the individual or for a number of individuals who wish to do it together. That's also fine. They can do this in their own home or in, that, 
even in the Beit Knesset, but on their own time, so to speak. They can do it before, they can do it afterwards, but not as part of the public orders of, uh, of prayer. Aval bevatech haknesiot, hu ledaati ta'uth. But to do this in the Beit Knesset, as part of, in the Ramah means, as part of the sedra tefillah of the tzibur, this is a mistake, says the Rambam. Mishum shebatech haknesiot hem l'rabim. Because the shul is a community uh, uh, place, it belongs to the community, it belongs to the to the general public, and you have in in such a general place, uh, which belongs to the public, you have uh, pe- some people who are old, or in a great rush, or not feeling well, etc. And they cannot uh, be expected to remain f- uh, for their longer tefillah, where you have all these additions. For the, and and to them, this is a form of nezek, a form of damage, says the Rambam. Rambam writes, Lu hayasham ishe hazaken o halash, o nimol. If a person, if there, even there's only one person there who's older, or not feeling well, uh, or weak, and I add a person who's in a great rush, and he hasn't got time for all kinds of additions right now, hayani zokpaze, this causes him damage. This is, for him, a, a, not a simple matter at all. And therefore, says the Rambam, we have to limit ourselves in the Beth Knesset to saying those things which are essential and nothing more. And that is why the Rambam in Hilchot Tefillah Perek Teth, chapter 9, when he describes the order of Tefillah of Shaharit, for example, in the Beth Knesset, he writes that after the Shmon Esra is repeated and after the Nefilat Apai, the Tahanun, then we uh, say Tehillah Dawid, Ashre, and Seder Hayom, Uval Tzion, and the Kedusha that goes with it, and certain Psukim that are recited after that. And then the Shneach Tzibur says Kaddish after Seder Hayom, after Uvar Tzion, and that is the end of the Tefillah. And the Rambam writes, when Iftarim, and people then leave, that's the end of the Tefillah. There is nothing else to be said. In other words, all the additions that we are used to seeing today after that point in the Tefillah, such as Alen Shabach and Shir Shel Yom, and Enke Lokeno, and Pitum HaKetoret, and other uh, such additions, at, after each one of, uh, of which addition, very often Kaddish, is recited. All these additions obviously take more time, and with an, a Kaddish after each one it takes even more time, and this ends up adding quite quite a, a serious, significant amount of time to the overall uh, t- elapsed time of the tefillah. And this, as the Rambam, is a mistake. This is wrong. And, and therefore the question of the number of Kaddishim that we say during the day, and the number of additions that we uh, we are used to saying and adding to the order of tefillah, these uh, issues are clearly uh, ba- bound together and one leads to the other. There is one other point that I should mention in conclusion, that the Rambam does not seem to agree with the idea that uh, Kaddish is to be said every time, even if the entire Tzibur does actually say a mizmor of, of Tehillim, a parik from Tehillim together, the Rambam does not accept this idea apparently that Kaddish is to be recited because we have a Tishul of the Rambam in uh, Siman Resh Heth where he is asked this question uh, explicitly. He says, the question is as follows, If one or two prakim of Tehillim are said in Betzibur, not as individuals, as, as a community, Should they say Kaddish afterwards or not? The Rambam uh, answers this question very briefly. He says, Lo yomar kaddish b'shum panim. Kaddish is not to be said under any circumstances. Ela b'mkomot hayudoim shebetefilot ha'chova. It should only be recited at those well-known spots in the uh, tefillah, which is the compulsory tefillah of the tzibur. Only there should kaddish be recited. Or, or another possibility, ahare kriyat davar midivre ha'torah. Or, when something is read or learnt in the, in the in the community as as a public as a group of people ten or more when they learn something from the torah together rotzelomar for example he says dine halacha in other words when some halacha is discussed or taught or biur or some explanation of something in the torah or afilu drash pasuk ehad yomru aharau kadish the rabbanan here it's very clear that what the rambam is saying kadish the rabbanan yes he says that is to be said when something from the torah shabal peh is is studied betzibur as the Rambam writes also in his Nusa HaTafilot at the end of Sefer Ahava, there he says explicitly that when ten or more Jews study something from the Tarsha Baal Peh, they are required to say Kaddish the Rabbanan. But he deliberately leaves out discussing the possibility of saying Kaddish after the simple recitation of a Mizmor of Tehillim. 
So the very practice that is very common today of reciting Kaddish after every time a Mizmor is said, that, qu that uh, practice is also not uh, so clear and perhaps somewhat dubious. But even if we accept that practice, the, the number of times Kaddish is said today does in fact seem to be um, very much inflated. And it reminds one of what the Gemara states in Tamud Bavli, Masechet Shabbat, Daf Chof Yod Heth, where it says, Kol ha-koreth ha-halel b'chol yom, he who recites halel every day, harezem meharef u megadef. And Rashi explains, why is a person who recites halel every day as if he is cursing and making fun of, of, of Hashem or, or of this tefillah or, or of prayer in general? Rashi says, because this special tefillah, this special collection of mizmorim was uh, enacted to be recited on certain occasions for certain specific reasons. And a person who says it every day is turning it into some kind of a, a chant or a song or making into some kind of a joke, says Rashi. Rashi uses the word mitloses, which means to, to make fun, to make light of something. So the repetition of something which is of very, very great importance, something which is very holy and very special, to repeat that uh, time and time again, when it is not at all clear that it is warranted, this is not always uh, a very good idea at all. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. We would also like to suggest the following opportunity to our viewers. If you identify with Rabbi Bar Chaim's message and would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with the rabbi in honor or memory of a loved one, if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.